It doesn't matter what your favorite sport is, there should be no debate that baseball is by far the most unique. They play 162 regular season games in 180 days in the form of three or four game series in 30 stadiums that are all significantly different from one another. But it's not just when and where the teams play that makes baseball so unique, it's also very different in the way teams are constructed. This isn't the NBA where having one or two of the best players in the league pretty much guarantees you'll be in the finals. If that was the case, then the Angels would have been dominating the league for the last couple of years. Instead, they haven't won a playoff game since 2009. This massive distinction between baseball and basketball makes sense though. The game of baseball is a lot more complex than put ball into hoop, or prevent other team from putting ball into hoop. There's a game within the game in baseball that requires you to win dozens of smaller battles where the differences between winning and losing these battles is less than an inch. This dynamic is the reason why the 89-win Padres can beat the 111-win Dodgers in the first round of the playoffs in 2022, or why the 107-win Astros can lose in the 2017 World Series to the 93-win Nationals. Just because you have a team that's more talented does not mean that you're going to win in baseball. Because of this, upsets are actually a thing, and it makes every series that you watch that much more entertaining and unpredictable. So how do you build a winning baseball team? Steve Cohen and Peter Seidler will tell you to spend as much money as you possibly can to field the most talented team, while other teams will tell you to keep the payrolls as low as possible, find players that specialize in winning you these smaller battles within the game, use these players in the correct situation, and if you're consistent in doing this for the entire season, you will be successful. That has been the plan for the 2023 Tampa Bay Rays, and so far, it seems to be working. Before I go any further, welcome to The War Room, a channel where I discuss all things sports related. I'm going to be making MLB content all season long, so subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight to it. Since the Rays became a team in 1998, they've been above the league average payroll just one time, which was the 2000 season where they ranked 10th. Every single year besides that, they've been in the bottom half. In fact, in that same span, they've ranked in the bottom three lowest payrolls amongst the 30 MLB teams in 16 different seasons, including this year where they ranked 28th with a 26-man payroll of just over $56 million. Historically speaking, teams with this low of a payroll shouldn't be doing what the 2023 Tampa Bay Rays are doing. Because at the time of this recording, the Rays are the first team to start a season 10-0 since the 1987 Brewers. In Tampa's first 10 games, they put up 76 runs while allowing just 18, which are both leading the league. This plus 58 run differential in the first 10 games is a number we haven't seen since the 1880s, but it doesn't end there. Tampa won its 10th game last night versus the Red Sox 1 to nothing, with Peter Fairbanks getting the save. By MLB's definition, a save is awarded to the relief pitcher who finishes a game for the winning team under certain circumstances. A relief pitcher recording a save must preserve his team's lead while doing one of the following. Enter the game with a lead of no more than three runs and pitch at least one inning. Enter the game with the tying run in the on-deck circle at the plate or on the bases. Pitch at least three innings. But the irony of me bringing this up is out of the 30 teams, the Rays were the last one to record a save. Which is confusing because how does a team start 9-0 but have zero saves? Well, the answer to that question is because Tampa has won each of their first nine games by at least four runs. So they weren't not getting saves because of a lack of winning late in games, but because they're beating opponents so badly that the relievers can't possibly meet these requirements. But now we have to answer the question, how are they doing this? Well, simply put, when it comes to the lineup, they have the perfect combination of hitting for power and not striking out. In fact, they are number one in the league in home runs hit with 25, and dead last in strikeouts with only 65. The Rays also lead the league in RBIs with 75, which makes them the only team in baseball to have more RBIs than strikeouts this season, and no other team is even close. When you take these things into consideration, it makes sense that they are number one in the league in on-base percentage, slugging, and obviously OPS, which is a combination of the two. The pitching side of things are just as dominant. The Rays lead the league with an ERA of a 1.7, with the next closest team being the Twins with a 2.63, so on average, they're letting up almost a full run less than the next closest team. They lead Major League Baseball in shutouts with four. Three out of those four came in the last three games when they beat the Athletics 11 to nothing in back-to-back -back games, followed by a 1-0 win over Boston. The pitching has let up the least amount of hits, least amount of earned runs, opponents bat 184 against them, they have a team whip of a .9 and have allowed the least amount of home runs. Speaking of home runs let up, in a game last week versus the Giants, White Sox starter Michael Kopech let up four home runs in one inning by himself. The Tampa Bay Rays as a team 
have allowed only 4 home runs total in their first 10 games played. If we're being completely honest, I can go through every single player on this roster and talk for minutes about each of them and the impact they have, but then this video would take forever and by the time I finish editing it, the Rays will be 15-0. So to save some time, we're going to highlight some key players, how the Rays got them, their stats thus far, and how much they're getting paid, starting with Wander Franco. The Rays signed Franco in 2017 as an international prospect out of the Dominican Republic, for $3.85 million at the age of 16 years old. Today, Franco is 22 and one of the fastest rising stars in the game. Tampa has always thought highly of him, and in late 2021, they wanted to make sure he was a Ray long term. So they signed him to an 11 year, $182 million extension that is heavily backloaded. He currently leads the American League in home runs with four, has a 317 batting average, and an OPS over one. There's a good chance he makes his first career All Star appearance this year and the Rays are getting all of this for just $2 million. Next is Randy Rosarena. In early 2020, the St. Louis Cardinals traded Randy to the Rays for Matthew Libertor, Edgardo Rodriguez, and Cash. If this trade sounds like a fleece, that's because it was. Before Randy played in enough games to even be considered a rookie, he had a historic run for the Rays in 2020 in the postseason, which propelled them to the World Series. This is where he made a name for himself since he pretty much came out of nowhere and was immediately a star player once he got playing time. In 2021, he officially played enough games to be considered a rookie and took home American League Rookie of the Year honors. He's coming off a World Baseball Classic run where he went off for Team Mexico and his hot bat has carried over into this MLB season. He's batting a team best 359 with two home runs and a team best 11 RBIs with an OPS over one. He's another guy who might be making an all-star game appearance while he's getting paid $4.15 million. Again, there's a bunch of other guys I can name in this lineup like Brandon Lowe batting 292 with a 1.1 OPS making $4 million. Josh Lowe batting 364 with an OPS over one, making $723,000, or Luke Raley slugging a team best 750 with an OPS of 1.1, making $722,000. You get the point, but let's move on to pitching, specifically the first three in their starting rotation, who are all pitching like Cy Young winners right now. First, Shane McClanahan. The Rays drafted McClanahan with the 31st pick in the 2018 draft. He was an all-star last season in his second year in the league and finished sixth in American League Cy Young voting. This year, he's 2-0, has pitched 12 innings, struck out 12 batters, and let up two earned runs, which is a 1.5 ERA. And this season, he is making a whopping $737,000. Next is Drew Rasmussen. Tampa got him in a trade in 2021, which at the time was known as the Willie Adamas trade, which sent the Rays shortstop to Milwaukee, but based on his play so far this year, Drew Rasmussen might be the headline of this deal. So far, he is 2-0, has pitched 13 innings, allowing only 3 hits, 0 runs, and struck out 15 batters, all for the low price of $740,000. And finally, there's Jeffrey Springs. Springs was traded to Tampa from the Red Sox in 2021, in which the Rays gave up Ronaldo Hernandez and Nick Sogard. This season, Springs is 2-0, pitched 13 innings, allowed only 3 hits, 0 runs, while striking out 19 batters. This season, his salary is $4 million. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to respond with as a result of me bringing this up. It's a small sample size, and the teams they've played haven't been very good. Those are both true, however, in the history of Major League Baseball, there have been hundreds of teams that have started a season against garbage opponents who are expected to be much better than this 2023 Rays team, and none of those teams have gotten off to a start nearly as dominant as Tampa this season. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, baseball is unique. There's zero guarantee that the Rays win their first World Series this season, or even make the playoffs for that matter. But even if the Rays do collapse at some point and fail to make the postseason, what they've been able to accomplish these past 10 games with the payroll they have is something that could never happen in any other sport. While there's still yet to be an MLB team out there that proves this Moneyball style construction of a team can win a championship, the 2023 Tampa Bay Rays have at least proved that not only is it possible to win, but it's possible to dominate. I'm curious to see if this strategy works out for them in the long run, and if it does, we're going to look at the 2023 Tampa Bay Rays forever as the team that broke baseball. A lot of work went into this video, so if you enjoyed, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. I'm going to be making videos like this all season long. Comment your thoughts below. I'm curious to see what you have to say. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.